good. Okay, guys, so we're going to go over Rule Master um, in detail. I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to show you how to put an order in, and I'm going to show you how to pay for the order and then print it out for your customer to have a copy and a copy for ourselves. So this is the software system. You just click right here at the bottom, Rule Master Start. It's gonna automatically open up into these pages. The first thing that's gonna pop up is an automatic page. It says FC, that is the company ID. That information always stays there so you don't have to do anything but enter. Second thing, branch ID number one, it's always usually there so you don't have to do anything, just press enter. And then your user ID, which is your initials. In my case, mine is TTD. First thing that pops up is the master menu. So the only thing that you need to concern yourself with is sales processing, which is number one. So just put enter. Second page, order entry. Okay, enter. All right, so this page is just, uh, I'm asking you where do you wanna to print to? It's an automatic page, it always comes up. You never have to change it, just put enter. So this is our software system and I'll just kind of go over what everything looks like. So up here, this is where you enter your, your new jobs. Okay, so that's what we're gonna start with. Down here, if you scroll all the way down, these are all the jobs that we have been doing up until this point. So how you read it is right here. Here's the customer name, which is an, an abbreviation. Here's the actual full customer name. Now, if there's an address or a PO, that will show up here, but since we're not installing, we don't usually put in the addresses. Over here is the date that the order was entered, okay? Now, this right here, this is the salesperson's initials, okay? This is the job status, and this is, you don't have to worry about that, that's just zero stuff. So anyways, what we're gonna do is we're gonna order, I mean, sorry, we're gonna enter a job. So this is a new customer, so we're gonna create a file for this new customer. So all you have to do is go to new order right up here. It's gonna automatically go to this page. So I'm gonna start putting the customer's name in, even though he's new, we're gonna start putting the customer's name in. His name is Patrick. And when I have the word Patrick in here, everything that starts with those letters are gonna to start to populate here on the side. But because um, this customer is new, his, he's not gonna populate, of course. If he was an existing customer, you would see his name in here and you would just go to it and press select. But because he's new, we're just gonna add him in. Now, the way to add him in is this little add button. Now, it's grayed out because there's already a Patrick existing. So basically, I'm just gonna back out of these letters a little bit. And if you notice, we're waiting for this add button to become available. Oh shoot, hold on delete them. So I deleted a couple of letters and now it's allowing me to add because there's no one other there's no other customer here with those initials. So basically start putting it in, we're going to add it. It is asking us do you want to start a new customer? Yes. So this is very easy. Now all you have to do with this page to create a customer is make sure that you are putting in the information that start on the side. Okay? So the first thing here, customer's name, Patrick Denton. Okay, the only other thing here I have to put is city, state. So I'm just gonna put LV, tab, NV, tab. I usually use our zip code, 89102. The other thing here, down here, is an email address. If you have the customer's email address, put it in. If it's like a contractor or an, or, um, an ongoing customer or an, install, an installer, you might wanna get their email address. But for right now, I'm just gonna put NA because you do have to put something there. Next thing is the telephone number. 2193. Next thing here is what kind of job it is. We only have one kind of jobs here, cash and carry. Press that selection. Second thing is down here, is it an existing customer or a new customer? It is a new customer, okay? The other star here, and sometimes these pages are way down at the bottom, so I just kind of drag mine up a little bit so I can see the full screen, okay? Now, the, the other one here is, this is the salesperson. So this was Robert's job. So we're gonna put Robert Valdez, okay? Since we've done all the things that have been starred, I'm gonna go ahead and add that customer in. Okay, so now if you notice, this customer is gonna populate to the very top because we just created him. So we're gonna go ahead and select it. It's gonna turn black. Here's your select button right here. 
I'm gonna go ahead and select that. So now Patrick is opened up into a brand new work order. I'm gonna explain how this whole page works. So up here is the date that we're ordering. This is the date that we created it, which is today's date. Down here, you're gonna see the customer's name, Robert's name, because he's a salesperson. Now here's the star here. This star has to be, you have to make a selection here or else it will not let you proceed. So what's the status of this situation? So this particular job here, can you see the paper? Okay, so this particular job here, the customer purchased LVP 301. Um, he has a deposit of $100 and a balance. So it's very important that we put the statuses correctly. So right here says deposit only, pick up later, okay? Down here says need to order. This one says customer pick up at vendor. Now this is customer paid full, pick up later. Okay, so those are the things that you're gonna be doing. So this situation, the customer made a deposit only, all right? So if you have any notes that you wanna put on this particular job, like if the customer you know has any specific requirements, there's a notebook, notepad right up here, okay? So I'm gonna open up that notepad and say, for example, I like to put the date on it just in case. You don't have to, because it already registers a date, but I usually put the date on it and I put my initials, okay? And I'm gonna put um, ETA or whatever you wanna put. ETA for delivery, or no, we have it in stock. We'll put deposit only. Let's just say whatever note you wanna put, okay? And then when you put save here, right here, it's actually gonna record who did it and what and what date. So I just do that because I'm crazy, but you don't have to do that because it has the date right here. So we're gonna go ahead and save that page and we're gonna exit out of it. And now if you notice, there's gonna be a green box here. That means there's a note in there, okay? So let's just move forward. Down here says find and add line items. This is where we're gonna find our materials that the, per the customer is purchasing, okay? We're gonna click on that. It's gonna open up another page. Now, on this side, this is like your Google line. Anything that you need, you put it in here, it's gonna find it for you, okay? And in this case, we're doing LVP 301. So the good thing about how we've set up this system is if you need something from the wall, you just put in the word wall. If you need a tile, you put in the word tile. If it's an FHA, you put in the word FHA, and then everything will come up. In this case, it's LVP. And all of our LVPs are gonna show up, okay? Now, I could have definitely put in LVP 301, but I just wanna show you guys that if you just put LVP, everything will populate, okay? So I'm gonna scroll all the way down. Here's your little thing here. I'm just gonna scroll all the way down to the one that we need, which is 301, okay? So now that that's been selected, it says right here, add item. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that item. Now this page is gonna come up. Now, what I think is easier when it comes to hard surfaces is to do it by the box quantity. So if you pull in that box quantity, this particular customer has 42 boxes, okay? So I'm gonna put in the number 42, and it's gonna generate exactly how much square feet he has, okay? So the second price, unit price, what did the customer pay for it? The customer paid $1.79. So you put in $1.79 here, enter, and it's gonna generate the payment, okay? That's all you're gonna do for here. That's all you're doing. When you come out of here, this is your close button. You don't need to save anything, everything automatically saves. So you just come out or you can just press escape, okay? So now the customer doesn't have anything else, no moldings or anything else. So now we have to put what he paid. So like I said, the customer only did a $100 deposit. So whether it is a full payment, a deposit payment, or any kind of payment, it always goes into the same place. So I'm gonna come out of this screen by pressing escape, okay? Now up here, there's some tabs, all right? The first tab is this page, which has all your lines. The second tab is your deposits. That's where you put your money in. The only thing you put is add deposit not change deposit, not delete deposit. It won't work for you. Just add deposit. This customer paid $100 cash, okay? So I'm gonna put in $100. It's gonna ask you to select form of payment. He paid cash. And then you have to put down here, if it's cash, put in safe because 
you know that you put it in the safe yourself. Now, for example, if this was a credit card payment, you would put Visa or whatever kind of card he paid with. However, you do not have to fill out any of this information. We do not keep cards on file. So the only thing you have to put in is if he paid Visa instead of cash, you would just change that to Visa and that's it, okay? I'm gonna save that. So down here, if you notice, job total, that's what the total of the job cost. Deposit, that's his $100 deposit. Balance, that's his balance, okay? So it's gonna register this as a line now. So anytime he comes back and pays the balance of this order, we're gonna go to add deposit and, and, and put that in right here, okay? So now we're just gonna go back to this line item here. So basically, that's all we have to do for this particular job. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna print it. Up here, there's some tabs up here. So this is copy, functions, print, okay? We're gonna go ahead and print that. First one, print agreement. Now, there's gonna have all these check marks here. You, you wanna keep those all checked because you wanna be able to show everything. Basically, this is asking you, what do you wanna show on this work order? We wanna show everything. So we're just gonna leave all those marked, check marked. I'm gonna to go to print agreement. Okay, so this is our work order. Order numbers right here. Okay, salesperson, the data was entered, the customer name. Okay, and now this is what the customer ordered. LVP, 20 mil, that's how much square feet come in the box, that's how much he got, that's what he paid, that's his balance. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and print this out and we're gonna do another one, but I wanna show you something different when I do the second one, because I wanna show you how to do an existing customer. So let's just come out of here. So basically when you're done this, all you gotta do is escape out of it, okay? Now for example, if you want to look something up, a previous, a previous order that you've already put in the system, <clears throat> you see these tabs down here? This says open, this says closed, this says both. If you have, are on selected open, you're only gonna see the jobs that have not been invoiced yet. And what that means is you're only gonna see a portion of the jobs. If you go to closed, once again, you're only gonna see a portion of the jobs. My suggestion and recommendation is always have it on both. When you do both, this build button is kind of like your enter button. You have to click that. And then that way it's gonna populate, see both, everything in the system. So now this list is a lot longer than the first time I showed it to you because now this is every single day for the past how many ever months we've had this software, okay? So you always wanna do that when you're looking for something. Pause. <laughs>